close this view. And then start sharing this one. And we'll see if everybody else helps on right now. But here we are. So hey, these are just uh, a few questions to ask yourself when you're kind of like facing challenges. These are actually great questions, in my opinion, because it just gives you a different perspective of stuff. I, I've I've already dealt like with a lot of issues and challenges in my life. I'm sure you guys have as well. We all deal with challenges and issues. And I think you can either take one or two perspectives of, of, of a challenge. Either you perceive it as something that's, oh my God, why is this happening to me? And it's and it's something that stresses you out. It makes you upset. It makes you angry. It makes you, it, it makes you feel, I don't know, a negative emotion, right? Or you can take it into perspective like, okay, cool. I understand this is stressing me out, but what can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? What's the positive? What's the positive to this to this event or this challenge that I'm facing? And these these questions here are designed to do just that. They're they're designed to help you help you look at a challenge or a problem from a different perspective. I just took a picture of this just right now, and I emailed it to myself. I know you can't really read read it perfectly, but it's it's okay. I'm going to go ahead and um, read them out loud either way. But let me get this going. So bas basically, you're gonna face a challenge, whatever challenge you're facing, here are some questions you can ask yourself to, to assist you in, in looking at the challenge and the problem from a different perspective, a, a, more, a more creative and productive perspective, okay? As opposed to just being like, oh shit, here we go again, this just happened to me, right? Because that's, we all react that way with situations, but then yeah, like you have, you have to like catch yourself and then step back for a moment and be like, okay, you know, I can get upset, but it doesn't really serve you. You getting upset, all it does is perpetuate that emotion. What does perpetuate means? A propeller that goes in circles and cycles, it perpetuates, which, which all it means is that you're gonna put yourself in a cycle of constantly feeling this way, right? And you want to break that freaking cycle because that cycle of that emotion keeps you in that emotion, okay? Again, we attract events into our life based on our emotions, based on how we feel, okay? You're that, that you're, you have that magnetic field around you that attracts you, that attracts events and things into your life. And that magnetic field is dictated by your emotions, all right? So when you're all frustrated because something's happening to you, some challenge or some problem, frustration, it puts out a magnetic field around you and it continues to attract more, more things that frustrate you. Have you? I'm sure you all can relate. You know, you wake up, it's all good. And all of a sudden, I don't know, you stub your toe and you're like, ah, oh, shit. And you, you know, we all know how it feels stubbing your little toe, right? It hurts. It hurts like hell sometimes. And it's just, okay, you frustrated you. And then shortly after something else happens that frustrates you and something else happens that frustrates you. It, it's just, it's just how, it's just how life works sometimes. Right. And so to break that cycle of constant frustration, <laughs> you have to like step back for a moment, breathe and be like, okay, I know there's not really much you can learn from stubbing your toe as opposed to just watch where you're freaking walking. Right. But you should, you don't, you shouldn't let it, get you into that cycle of emotions where you're just freaking frustrated because you stubbed your toe, right? Because we all know how that feels and we all and we all know exactly what I'm talking about when, when it comes down to these types of things, okay? So um, just like, and here's another example, just the other day. So I went to Starbucks, Pedro wanted me to get some some sandwiches for her, for her dad and for, for Bryson and a large coffee for her dad. So I get it, I get home, I put it on the counter, and I, I had to get ready to do something, right? And then Fedra, uh, she didn't see the cup the cup of coffee. And so when she grabs the bag, she snacks the coffee and it, it falls over and it spills all over the place, right? And she gets frustrated, right? She gets really frustrated. And I can tell she's frustrated, right? Because the way she's like her tone and, and all that stuff. And it is funny for me, but I'm like, I'm looking at her, I'm like, I'm like, I, I, She's like, I spilled the coffee and like all this stuff. I'm like, well, it's okay. I, you need help. And I kind of help her clean it. And she, you can tell she's upset. I'm like, are you upset with me? It's like, yes. I'm like, why are you upset with me? It's like, because you put the coffee there. It's like, 
what the hell, bro? Like, you why didn't you look before you got the grab the bag before? And so that's what happens, you know. One thing happens, and then everything around you just just frustrates you. Like, I'm just being there and trying to help, and she's upset with me, right? Because she's blaming me for for her spilling the coffee. I'm like, and so this is an, a a good example. This happens to all of us, right? Um, and for me, it's humorous when it, it kind of happens, but at the same time, it's also frustrating because. I'm like, I didn't do shit, so relax, right? But um, this is this is just simple things here, okay? Like, I, we all know how it feels to to get frustrated and to get upset with things. So just understand, you when when something happens and that's challenging and that's stressing you, you have to step back for a mo moment and just go ahead and ask yourself these questions. You can have other questions as well that you may ask yourself, but these are some some good questions to ask. So just go with the first one. How is this challenging me? So we, we talked about challenges before. Challenges are good. They're, they're actually necessary in our life in order for us to grow, to expand, especially to learn new skills, okay? How is this challenging me? How is this challenging me? We work in real estate. We're gonna, we face a lot of challenges in this industry, okay? We really do. These challenges are good for us because they teach us how to handle situations, how to solve problems more than anything, okay? I just, last month, Maria and I had the challenge. She mostly had the challenge, but I had to, I had to coach her through the challenge of dealing with a, a very difficult listing agent, okay? And she's still dealing with her now, but we had to go through the inspection process of dealing with a very difficult listing agent who was very being, who was being very vicious and very, you know, mean towards maria and it was just something she's we have we have to learn i've been through it as well i'm sure we all have been through it a lot of us have we kind of know how that feels but how do you manage that right how do you manage communicating with them it's every phone call you have to make towards them or you pick up from them it's like shit i have to fucking deal with this shit cool it's okay to feel that way but what's the challenge here well the challenge is Managing difficult people, that's a challenge there, okay? And if in this industry, we're going to have to talk to a lot of people. Difficult clients, difficult agents on the, on the other end of the deal. Sometimes difficult lender, lenders or whatever, right? And so the challenge there is how do you manage that? But more importantly, how do you manage your emotions, right? And so keeping your composure is a big thing. And... I'm very proud of Maria. She did keep her composure during that time, right? And I understood it was very, it bothered her the way she was speaking to her. But I think for the most part, I mean, she kept her composure. She kept it very professional. And that's what you should do 100% of the time. You know, you really should do that. And at the end of the day, we got everything we wanted from the inspection rejection. We really did. And so we did what was best for our client. All right. Making, making your the agent on the other end, your enemy, isn't the best way to deal with any type of any type of real estate transaction. That's the worst way to deal with it. Now it's you versus them. That's not how it is. It's like it's find some it's find a compromise to 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 get this deal closed. That's how I always perceive it. Okay. And so that was a challenge for her. Me and Zuma are dealing with the where we were dealing with the situation very similar as well, dealing with the resolution and dealing with basically some money issues on the on the seller side to get what we wanted for our client. At the end of the day, we didn't get everything we wanted, but it's just financially speaking, it wasn't possible for the seller to do it. But at the very least, we are got we got a, the things we wanted to fix with the property, and they're going to get the, a new roof on the property. So, you know, it was good, and we had to deal with some stuff, look at the adjust the price and a bunch of other things. But a lot of lessons here learned for me too, but as well as for Zulma because she's more new. And she's learning this stuff, right? And so challenges are freaking everywhere for you guys. And they're there for you to learn something, okay? So I really need you guys to approach every deal this way. Learn as much as you possibly can from every single deal. You'd be surprised how much you can learn. I remember Jules closing la last, last year. Jules learned a shitload of stuff about rural stuff, about like, about flowers that were poisonous to horses, and a bunch of other things. You know, it was crazy how much she learned from that one deal. That one deal, she learned a ton of stuff. 
and, and water and, rights, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. You can, I mean, you can, you can name it. She freaking, and then at the end of it all, freaking seller financing. <laughs> so it was insane dealing with a, a, a buyer's agent who thought she knew shit, but she didn't really know anything. She just pretended to know stuff. Same thing with the lender who thought she could close this deal, this, this property. But at the end of the day, she couldn't close it. And it was crazy. Like I was, I mean, I was fucking overwhelmed by the, and I wasn't even, I wasn't even in Jules position, you know? And we had everybody involved, new lenders. I mean, we were seeking advice everywhere. Attorneys. Yeah. It was a learning lesson. It was, we were all over the place with this one, you know? You know, I, I got more involved than I thought I needed to. But at the end of the day, <laughs> I just, I needed to. I was like, damn, like this is, this is way more crazy. So, I mean, like, again, there's so many lessons to learn from even just one deal. You could come out with, come out of it with learning so much, right? And I encourage you to, please. And it is challenging. Every deal is going to have its own challenging stage. Sometimes it's in the beginning when you're trying to find a property for your client. Sometimes it's in the middle uh, during the inspection stuff. Sometimes it's with the lending side. Sometimes it's at the end, you know, something hits, some shit hits the fan and you're trying to figure things out and trying to put things together. And um, so... Uh, sometimes it's communication. You're just trying to get, just communicate with the other agent to see what's going on and stuff like that. So there's, there's always something to learn. So these challenges, how is this challenging me? It's a powerful question to ask yourself when you're facing problems or when you're facing something that's stressing you out. Again, don't, don't just give into the stress or the anger or the frustration because it doesn't serve you. It's there to teach you something. Like, hey, you're feeling this way. Step back for a second. Try to understand why you're feeling this way. Okay. Here's the next question, right? And again, the, the, all these questions are kind of similar to, to each other. What can I learn from this? 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 Very powerful question, right? Similar, but a little different, right? There's always something to learn in every, every experience in life. There really is. Don't, don't ever think that an experience that you have in life lacks a, a lesson. Even you stubbing your toe on the edge of your of the of your bed or the, the 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 leg of a table there's a lesson there right watch where you're freaking walking <laughs> there there it is there's your lesson so try to look try to look for these lessons right how is this challenging me okay it's, just, it's challenging me in, it's challenging me in a way where it's testing my patience okay all right so what can i learn from this well i can learn to be more patient like i know i expect this to to happen now but like hey Things don't always work out in a timely manner for all for us every single time. So being patient is important because I can I can sit here and be frustrated all day long, but it's not gonna it's not gonna make the process go faster if that makes sense, right? Say for instance, when you're waiting for I don't know maybe an appraiser to get the report to you guys, and you guys are getting kind of tight with the closing date, and the appraiser is just taking their sweet ass time. They said they're gonna have it on Thursday. Here's Friday, and then there's no. There's nothing from the appraiser. The truth is there ain't shit you can do in that situation. <laughs> there ain't shit. There's nothing you can do to, 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 to add pressure on the appraiser to get you that report. Okay. There's nothing you can do. The appraiser is just taking their sweet ass time or whatever. Or sometimes they're, they're very difficult. You know, sometimes they, they appraise the property for undervalue under, under the contractual price. Sometimes they come back with conditions. And then we handle the conditions and they go back, look at the property, and then they come back with more conditions. I've seen that happen as well. And it just delays and delays and delays. And then they're like, yeah, I mean, I can't get to it now. I'll, I'll get to it in two weeks. I've had that happen too. My, in two weeks, my, what the, we we're supposed to close yesterday, you know, and you're going to come back in two weeks. So your patience will be tested. Okay. We all get tested with our patients, I think on a daily basis, right? Um, so pay attention to what you can learn from the, from the challenges you're facing. Next one, how will this help me grow? How will this help me grow? Again, very similar questions, but again, slightly different. The growth process here, hey, the more patient I can be, the, more, the less stress I'll be as well. That's growth for me, right? Hey, the more I can understand about the real estate process, the more experience I get as a real estate agent and the better I am at serving my clients. 
Because one thing that experience gives you, especially in this industry, it helps you anticipate what can possibly happen. And as a result, you can then help prepare your client to anticipate what can possibly happen as well. Here's an example, right? When I'm explaining the appraisal process with my clients, I mean, look, so we have to get your, your home appraised. What does that mean? Well, some person who has who's who is a licensed appraiser is going to go to the property and it's going to tell us what it's valued at. Now, I can give you an idea what it's valued at, but I can't tell you, hey, this is exactly what it's valued at. That's their job, okay? Now, I think it's valued around here, you know, right between this range. That's what I'm kind of seeing. Um, but ultimately, they're going to tell us what it's worth. Now, there's three situations that can happen there. The first situation is that the house is valued for more than what the contract says. We're under contract for 500000 and it appraises for 510 In that case, we're fine. You're never going to pay more than what, than what the contract says, okay? You're never going to pay more than $500,000 for this house because that's what it says in the contract. If it's, if it's valued at 510 great. You know you got the house for a discount and you have $10,000 equity on the property. Amazing. Awesome. Now, it can't appraise at value, meaning that we're under contract for $500,000 and the appraiser comes back with, hey, it's worth $500,000. Okay, cool. Perfect. Then we're good. You know you're paying what it's worth. The lender's happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. Now, the other situation is that it appraises for less than $500,000. Say it appraises for four ninety, dollars right? So there's a $10,000 difference there. Now, we're going to have to now figure out what's going to happen because the, the bank's not going to give you more than $490,000 for this house, but we're under contract for $500,000. So now we need to negotiate with the seller to see what the heck's going to happen with this price. Now, pretty much 99% of the time from what I've seen, the seller just adjusts the price for four ninety. dollars they're going to ask if you can probably pay the difference. What I'm going to say is that they don't have the money to pay the difference. They don't have the extra the $10,000. Hey, you may or you may not. I don't need to know that. They don't need to know that. Okay. So those are the situations there. And one other thing is that we they make when it appraises, it may come back with conditions, meaning that the, the appraiser needs a couple of things fixed with the property in order for it to, to make the to uh, officialize the report, right? Because if, if not, then they're not going to officialize a the report. Therefore, we can't close this deal. And sometimes you'll see that. Chip paint is a very common uh, a common condition that, that comes up with these appraisers all the time, especially with FHA and VA, and VA appraisers, okay? Because they have to be more strict with the property since the property does have to be um, habitable. So that's that's me explaining this to my clients so they can anticipate what can possibly happen, okay? How can I explain that to them? Well, it's called experience, okay? I've experienced these things. And therefore, I can, I can give them a heads up of what can possibly happen. And so now, if whatever does happen, they're more prepared than not. And those are all the situations that could possibly happen there, right? I've never seen a situation where that doesn't happen. Well, I've seen situations where it appraises for like a lot less. It's like $30,000 less, but that's pretty rare. Anyways, the next question, how can I make this better? How can I make this better? How can I make it better? How can I make it better? Sometimes the situations where like, maybe it's your organization, right? Maybe the challenge here is the fact that you're not, so, you're not as organized as you should be, and you need to get better at, at your organization skills when it comes down to managing your, your, your clients, managing deals, managing your business, you know? This is this is good. This is this is fair, right? So using the tracker, using checklists, using um, using other systems with your emails to keep track of stuff, that's very important for you to to be good at that. And if you're not good at that, and you notice that you, you get stressed a lot because you're not organized, well, how can I make this better? That's a good question. How can you improve on your organization skills? How can I get better? Is the next question. How can I get better? How can I make this better? You can improve systems, but you can also improve on yourself. Well, you know, it's not so much that I don't have a system. I have a great system, but I lack the discipline to execute the, to execute the system. This is a good one. A lot of a lot of us do lack that discipline, right? And we have a great system. You're like, you're all, this is my schedule. This is my system. Everything's so perfect and amazing. And you fail to execute the system. But that's a lack of discipline which means what? It means that you need to get better. That's it. 
that there is no other way. You have to be more disciplined, right? Get better. What can you do to, to improve on, on executing the things you say you're going to do? Because, hey, this is a problem for a lot of us. Even I fail at this many times, right? And, and it's something that I think the, even the best of us fail at. But it's, it's okay. You just keep going. You keep trying. You keep, you keep on getting better. How can I get better? Well, tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. You know, right now I have another couple hours left in my workday. I'm going to actually implement this. Let me do, let me do the hyper-focus uh, technique that Rick taught me. Okay, for five minutes, prepare. Get everything ready. Okay, the next, for the next 45 minutes, I'm just going to freaking hit it hard. You know, I need to just go ahead and organize myself here with my emails and then, and then update everything on my tracker when it comes down to my deals. Great. I take a 10-minute break and then take another five minutes to prepare again and then hit it, another, hit it again for another five minutes. Hyper-focused. Nobody's distracting you. Turn off your phone, right? No TikTok. No, no, no Facebook. It's just boom. Just focus on work. Focus on work. I'm going to make phone calls for the next 45 minutes, right? Boom. And you just focus on making phone calls, whatever it is your task may be, right? And now you're now you're you're practicing what? You're practicing discipline, and you're getting better, right? You're getting more. You're getting you're getting better at at being more disciplined at executing the things you need to do throughout the day. Because I get it, man. I get distracted all the times all the time as well, like this and that, phone calls here and there, and all the things that I wanted to do for the day, I didn't get to do as much as I wanted to do. But if I can, at the end of the day, if I can, I can squeeze in a couple of hours, of just solid work. I can actually get a lot done. You'd be surprised how much you can get done in 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Shit. You can do a lot if you're just focused on it. Okay. So get better at that. How can I get better? Next one. How can I serve or help? How can I serve or help? This is a great question for when it comes down to contribution, especially in our industry where our entire focus is to take care of our clients. We are fiduciaries. As a fiduciary, we have to put our clients' needs above our own, okay? It's not about us making money. It's about us taking care of our clients. As long as you take care of your clients, the money is going to keep on coming, okay? So don't worry about the money. Take care of your clients, okay? How can I serve? How can I help? How can I take care of my clients, right? This is what we should be focused on. It's, as long as you do this, Dude, you, you're, you'll be fine. Trust me, the money will come, okay? And and you won't do anything stupid to get you in a, in a weird situation, okay? You'll always do what's right and what's best for your clients, you know? Whether you're able to negotiate that or not, because I get it, you know, when it comes down to negotiation, the both parties need to agree on whatever it is that they, that, that they compromise on. Because may, sometimes we don't get exactly what our clients want. But at the very least, you should still fight for it. You should still push for it. You should still try, okay? Don't just give up. Next one. Am I living on purpose? Miguel talked about this the other day. Am I living on purpose? Am I on purpose? Am I living on purpose? Am I on purpose? You know, what, what is your purpose? It's, what is your purpose in life, right? Is your purpose in life just to take care of yourself? Do you have a family? Do you have children? Are you married, right? I mean, your purpose changes when it's just not when it's when it when it isn't just you, right? Is your purpose to serve your family, to provide for your family, to protect your family, to love your family, right? And is is this career that you have in real estate is this aligned with your purpose, right? I really enjoy helping people, and um, when I do help people purchase a property and, and get into their first home, it's it's something that really I feel like I'm serving. I feel like I'm helping. I feel like I'm contributing to to my society, and to my community, right? But, you know, the my, the amount of money I can make in this industry allows me to give back and donate to organizations that I believe in. So yeah, that that allows me to align myself with my purpose if I really believe in contribution, right? So. Very powerful question. Am I am I living on purpose? Am I on purpose? Right? Am I on purpose? Let's get into the next couple of questions here. Let me see. 
and I'll, I'll email this to you guys. I have to email you guys a couple of things, but I'll get it all together today and email it to you guys. Here's the next question. Is what I'm is what I'm doing, thinking or saying in accordance to what I believe? Or maybe a better question is, is what I'm doing, thinking or saying in accordance to what I want to believe? So let's go back to beliefs. Let's talk about this really quick, okay? You have subconscious beliefs and you have conscious beliefs. 90 to 95% of your reality is manifested by your subconscious beliefs, okay? 90 to 95%. The other 5 to 10% is manifested by your conscious beliefs. Now, you may have some subconscious beliefs that may not serve you. So is what I'm doing thinking or saying in accordance to what I believe, when I, when I see belief, I'm, I, for me, automatically, I'm thinking subconscious, okay? So I think right here, when you're asking this question consciously, is what I'm, is what I'm doing, thinking, or saying in accordance to what I want to believe, or maybe you can say consciously believe, right? Because the subconscious is gonna be automatic. And so if you automatically have sub, if you have subconscious beliefs that don't really serve you and do not empower you, and you're going to automatically live by that and you catch yourself like, dude, I'm doing this and it's not, it's not on purpose. It's not, it's not, it's not in accordance to my purpose. It's not what I want to create. And so therefore asking yourself this question is what I'm doing, thinking or saying in accordance to what I, to what I want to believe, to what I, or maybe to what I want to believe at a subconscious level or to what I consciously believe, then maybe that's a better question because then, because consciously you're going to be more aware of what, what you actually really want. Subconsciously is just automatic. It's autopilot. And if those beliefs that you have at a subconscious level don't really serve you or do not, or not, or not empowering you, then you're better off not, you're trying not to live by them. You're trying to change those beliefs, right? And so consciously, you're trying to change your subconscious beliefs. And it takes time. It takes energy. It takes work. It's not easy. It's actually very challenging. But it's, it's, it is doable, all right? It's, it is possible that you can change your subconscious beliefs, all right? And these, these questions do help you because these questions just kind of like everything starts with questions. Man, I can't even get a straight line going. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to use this pad here. And it's, it doesn't. All right, here we go. Perfect, All right? So it's it's not easy to change your subconscious beliefs, but it is possible. You have to be very consistent with it. And asking yourself these questions, especially especially keeping yourself from just reacting to your reality based on your subconscious beliefs, especially when your subconscious beliefs don't serve you and don't empower you, is probably going to be the best way. You have to catch yourself, step back for a second, like, dude, is, is what I'm doing, thinking, or saying in accordance to what I really want to believe in my life no, I don't want to be the type of person who's always freaking stressed out all the time. I don't want to be the type of person who's always getting angry and upset with, with shit that's happened in my life. I don't want to be that type of person. I want to be the type of person who has, who has composure. So therefore, is what I'm doing, thinking, or saying in accordance to what I want to believe? Right now, it's not because I'm angry. I'm frustrated. So I need to step back for a second, breathe a little bit, and get myself aligned with what I want to believe. The more I can do this, the more I can then program my subconscious to becoming this way automatically. And then when it's automatic, when it's already programmed to your subconscious, it's just, it's automatic. It just happens. Shit, hit, shit hits the fan and you're like, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? Well, you know, what lessons can I learn from this? How can I, how can I make it better? How can I get better from this, right? You just automatically, you're asking these questions. You're asking these questions and you're approaching every situation, every challenge in your life this way. And it's powerful. You know why it's powerful? Because now you're in control. You're acting the way you want to be as opposed to being the person you've always been that you don't really like. These questions give you power because it allows you to focus, okay? Consciously focus. And not just allow yourself to subconsciously react to the things in your life. Next question. Is my decision, is my decision beneficial? Beneficial. I'm trying to get a straight line here. It's, it's really hard with this pen. Is my decision beneficial to the greater good? Is my decision beneficial to the greater good? 
Again, a very powerful question. Why is that? Because if your decision is just a selfish one, you know, what's best for me, what's best for me, what's best for me, fuck everybody else. I don't care about everybody else. You're probably not making the best decision. You know, you're probably not making the best decision, even for yourself, by the way. Usually the selfish decisions aren't the best decisions for you. If you go back to the 12 universal laws, the law of, the law of oneness indicates that we're all connected. So if you're just taking fo focusing on yourself, taking care of yourself, you're not really focusing on everything around you, which is still connected to you, and you're not, you're not allowing yourself to make the best decisions for the greater good of all, then you're not really serving the greater good of all, which means you're not really serving yourself, okay? You serve yourself more when you take care of others. You really do. And we already know how this feels. We know how it feels when you take care of other people. When you serve other people, does this mean that you can never should never be selfish? Of course not, right? Take care of yourself too. Do some self care. Buy yourself stuff. All that stuff matters. But if every decision is only beneficial to you and never for the greater good of others, then you're going down the wrong path. Especially if you truly want to be happy, okay? Because actually, true happiness comes from progress. You progressing, you getting better, and contribution. You helping other people, whether it's your spouse or your children or your grandchildren or your friends and family or just a random stranger that's out there you know that needs help like that you feel good just helping them too you know there's there's pleasure and and love that comes from that as well next question what would you have to believe in order to Feel this way. What would you have to believe in order to feel this way? Here's a great quote. Nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. Nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. Nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. Okay? Let me give you a couple of examples. So if you raise a child and you, you kind of condition them to think every time you smack them over the head, it's you expressing love to them. They'll, they'll feel loved every time you smack them over, over their head. Because, why? Because nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. If they give it the meaning that you smack them in the head, and I know this is a silly example, but, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to give you, I'm trying to get you to understand this, this statement that, that nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. You train, you condition somebody long enough to believe that when you smack them over the head, they, they feel love. I'm telling you, people, they're going to feel love every time you smack them over the head, okay? Because nothing has any meaning except the meaning you give it. So when it comes down to this question here, what would you have to believe in order to feel this way, right? What do I need to believe in order to feel this way? Now, so say, for instance, there's a challenge. Say, say here, here's a good example, right? I like to use Fedra as an example, which is just because we have a lot of experience together. I love her. I have a lot of respect for her. She's probably the most interesting person I've ever met in my life. And her life is, I mean, it's when she tells me her stories, I'm like, I'm always blown away. It's just so much more interesting. Even her dreams are better than my dreams, you know? She dreams about God and like God talking to God, talking to seeing her grandmother who passed away and angels. My dreams are about like fucking like zombie apocalypses and being the future and weird, like it's just. Nothing, nothing near as cool as her, her dreams. Nothing near as cool, right? So um, when she was young, we were together. Probably we could, when I met her, I was about 25. She was 21. Um, shortly after, about a year after, she was diagnosed with cancer, right? Uh, terminal cancer. They only give her like a year or two years to live. Really tough time in our life. You know, really tough time. And you know what? how she perceived it? She perceived it as God was punishing her. That's how she perceived it. She told me that. She says, this is my punishment. This is God is punishing me. And I was like, interesting, you know? At that time, I was still pretty fresh in my development as in personal development, human behavior. But, you know, the second she told me, you know what? I, I told her, my dude, we can beat this shit, bro. We can win it. We can, we can, I'm telling you, we can, we can win it. We can beat it, right? She didn't really believe me. Went through a lot of, went through chemotherapy and a bunch of other stuff, and it was terrible, right? Um, the, none of that cured it. None of it cured it. The way she got cured is that she did natural 
herbs and diets, dieting and reducing her stress. And she's been cancer free ever since. No surgeries, no nothing, you know. But what would you have to believe in order to feel this way? She felt guilty. She felt defeated because she felt that God was punishing her with this disease. And I didn't perceive it that way. I'm like, no, it's not. It's just because you've been stressed and you you, you eat like shit. <laughs> and like, you just have to change that. Change your lifestyle and your body will change. It will change accordingly. If you're, for me, it was like, you need to learn lessons about what health really is. That, that was me. That was my perspective of it. You know, her perception was she was being punished by God, her creator, right? Which I don't believe God punishes people that, this way, by the way. Right? I don't believe in sin. I don't believe in this stuff, you know? I have a very specific way of believe, understanding my reality, which is in accordance to those 12 universal beliefs that I expressed with you guys before. But for her, that's how she perceived it. For me, it was like, no, you just need to learn how to freaking eat healthy, bro. Come on. Like, that's change your lifestyle, right? Exercise, breathe. And then you have to also learn how to manage your stress. That This is a perfect example. What would I have to believe in order to feel this way, Right? Nothing has any meaning except the meaning that you give it. Many times you just change the meaning, right? Now she didn't, doesn't believe that she was punished. She, was, she believes that, no, she needed to learn now. She changed how she perceived that event in her life, okay? And you guys can as well, right? You're not stuck with believing whatever you believe, and that's just how it is. No, dude, you can change it, right? Next one. How can I attract more love and more growth into my life? A very powerful question. How can I attract more love and more growth in my life? How can I attract more love and more growth in my life? Good question here, you know? Everything starts with questions. Every, I want to say everything starts with questions, right? And when you start asking powerful questions like this, you get powerful answers. And those powerful answers give you some give you some insight of what you need to do in your life, okay? You know the, what's the best way to attract more, lo more love into your life? Give more love, right? As you give more love, you receive more love. Why? Because the, the, universe, the universal law, the law of cause and effect states that exactly. Then you have the law of compensation saying that everything, you, everything good that you do in this, in this world, it actually comes back to you. And many times with interest, you know? You want more love? Give more love. You want more growth? Well, hey, put growth out, you know, grow, learn, expand yourself, ask yourself these questions. Don't just be the same person you've always been because you get, you end up producing the same results you've always produced. You want to produce better results in your life? You better start growing. You better start expanding yourself. You better start using these questions. Start reviewing the binder that we created together. Hopefully you guys did create it, right? Hopefully it's there. Hopefully you, you use it. <laughs> Right. Hopefully daily you can just use 10 minutes to just kind of review this information because this is you. This is you growing. This is you affirming what it is that you believe in your life, what you what it is that you want to believe in your life. How can I attract more money and more wealth into my life? Another good question, right? Very similar to the to the first question, but slightly different. Now we're talking about money and wealth, right? Money and wealth, money and wealth. It is true. The more you give, the more you receive, even with money. Okay. Now, when you're giving in a very sincere way where you're helping other people, that comes back to you because the law of cause and effect states it and the law of compensation states that all good that you put out into this world comes back to you, right? Even if you can only donate 1% of your, of your earnings right now, that's better than, than donating nothing. Donate to an organization that you believe in, right? I send money to my mom every, every month, okay? Every month I send up some money. And on top of that, we send money to organizations that we believe in. There's an organization that's that's helping, uh, to that's assisting in stopping human trafficking. I donate to that organization on a monthly basis. I sometimes donate to my church. I put money aside so I, my family or Fedra's family needs help. I just take from that, that account and I just give it to them. I'm not giving them for my money that I need to maybe grow my business and stuff like that. I just put money aside for that, right? And so giving, giving is the best way to receive. And then how can you attract more wealth into your life? Well, how about you, you become financially astute, right? Financially literate. Understand what is wealth, 
how can you attain wealth, right? This is this goes back to your growth. You grow and you expanding yourself. You learning, okay? We're, we're almost the thing. I think there's like one more question left, and I'll I'll let you guys go, All right? That's um. So this the final question here, or the final two questions. Uh, you see here. Okay, so this is pretty much these are the questions you kind of want to ask yourself at the end of the day. These last two questions, right? Well, at least this question right here. So what did I learn today? How, ha how have I grown today? Many times, a lot of us, we work, 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 and we get to the end of the day and we're exhausted and we just fall asleep and we wake up the next day and we just work, 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 work. It's, you have to reflect on your day. Even if you don't reflect on your day, reflect on your week, you know? Do some reflection as, as much as you possibly can throughout your days or throughout the weeks. At the very least, especially you know, monthly, yearly, will be good reflections to see what you've learned, right? Many times you don't give yourself credit for everything, all your growth that you've had. So what did I learn today? How have I grown today? Or what did I learn this week? How, ha how have I grown this week? Or what did I learn this month? How have, how have I grown this month? Or what did I learn this year? How have I grown this year? Reflection, reflection, reflection. This is, this is great. I, I think I reflect more than I should. I, I think I need to spend more time kind of working because I reflect too much sometimes, right? Because I, I, I love it. I love doing it. I love seeing the growth that I've had because it inspires me. It makes me proud of myself and it, and it, and it motivates me to, to continuously grow more and more and more and more, right? It really does inspire you, right? Say if you've been working out and you've been losing weight, like really like look at yourself, right? Like, dude, I've lost weight. I can, I can, I can see my ribs. You know, I can see, I can see my hip bone or whatever, you know, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. Or I see that I, the scale says that I've lost 10 pounds. That's great. I feel lighter, right? And this is just a simple example of this, you know, a weight loss. I mean, it, I have more money in my account, right? <laughs> I put 10% aside for my investments. My first time doing it, I'm so proud of myself. Now, where do I put it, right? So, so again, how have, how have I learned today? What did I learn today? How have I grown today? Or week or month or year? And then the last question, you know, how can I consistently vibrate at the frequency of God, love, great health, and wealth, right? This frequency, when you talk about frequency and vibrations, I'm specifically referring to emotions, okay? The emotions are the frequencies and the vibrations that we feel. And it, it resonates from our hearts, okay? Our emotions resonate from the heart. So how does it feel to, to resonate with God, right? How does it feel to resonate with love? How about great health and wealth? How do those emotions feel? How, what do those vibrations feel? What do those frequencies feel, right? You, you know, maybe you're not very close to God, but if you were, how would that feel? Maybe you don't have a lot of love in your life, but if you did have a lot of your lot, lots of love in your life, how would that feel? Maybe your health isn't really at the level that you want it to be, but if, what if it was? How does it feel to have great health, right? And what about wealth, right? You may not be very wealthy right now, but how would it feel to be very wealthy? That freedom, right? The health, the energy. Like you wake up and you feel good. You don't wake up and you're like, oh man, my back and my neck and my kidneys, right? You're just like, dude, I feel good. My joints are good. I'm mobile. My energy, I feel light. I feel amazing, actually, right? Good. Like, how does that feel? Just vibrate at that frequency for a bit. What about the a real connection with God and love, right? What does that feel like? There's this blissfulness to God. God is like, think of this like bright light that's just soothing and beautiful, right? That's the source. That's the source that we all come from. And we all draw drawn to it. So these are the questions here with you guys that I really wanted to cover. I found this in my folder, this my binder the other day. I was like, you know, I'm going to share this with you guys, you know. I'll email it to you guys if you, well, I'm going to email it to you guys. I'm sure most of you would want it. Um, you can change them up, you know, make them, make them what you guys want it to be. But let me see here. Does anybody have any, any questions or comments before I let you guys continue with your day uh, nope good reflection as always and clearly i'm being taught patience waiting on 
this agent and my California guy. So I guess I got to get with it. <laughs> no, yeah, patience, patience is tough, you know. It really um, is. We, we're, yeah. we're like, we live in a world where everything is like instantaneous, right? Right, yeah. Everything's in, and we got so accustomed to that. Like when it's something takes, like when I have, when I see that loading signal on my computer, I'm like, and it's only like, you know, five, 10 seconds. I'm like, what, yeah. what the fuck is taking so long? <laughs> and so, it's so patience, yeah, it's a big one. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. have, have anything else you want to add to add to that? Or maybe some questions you guys have that are really, that really useful for you guys? Or any comments? Thank you so much, as always. That was great. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, yeah, you guys are very welcome. You guys are welcome. Um, let me see here. So, hey, it is Friday. What is it? The 12th? Man, dude. <sighs> this year's going to fly. So, it's, it's Friday the 12th. Um, if you guys need anything, I'll be available. We have a couple of things. Around in the middle of the day, between two and, and four, we're going to be kind of busy. Fedra and I are going to be at a spa <laughs> to see you guys. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> but if you guys need me, just go ahead and just, you know, text me and everything. I'll get back to you once we're all done with stuff, if, if you guys need me during that time. But other than that, um, yeah, you guys have an awesome day. Thank you. Thanks, you too. I'm going to get these documents to you guys, okay? Thanks, Thanks Rick. Yeah, okay. you guys are very welcome. Bye-bye.